This is a video about the sin called incrementalism, which is the calling for of regulation of sin. It is calling for people to regulate sin instead of cut off the sin. That's what incrementalism is. It is a strategy by which people believe that calling for uh, certain reforms that they believe are reforms, certain um, cutbacks on a sin in, in order to gain over time traction to eventually get rid of a sin. For example, when it comes to abortion, this looks like calling for a 20-week abortion ban instead of always only calling for complete and immediate abolition of all abortion, equal protection for all humans, um, you'll have people who are pro-life who will call for a 20-week abortion ban, and they believe that once abortion is made illegal at a certain age, it will be easier in the future than to get another uh, bill that's at an even lower age, that's protecting even more children, and so they believe that over time they will eventually end abortion this way. But um, this is, uh, in principle, sinful because God never tells us to call people to do less than obedience. God never calls us to call others to anything less than full obedience. Uh, obedience is always to be complete, it's, and incomplete obedience is actually disobedience. Uh, we're to love the, our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, everything we have at all times. And any time you don't do that, any time it's less than full, then you're actually sinning against God. So incrementalism actually encourages people, it calls people to love God less with less than all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength. It, it, instead of calling for them to repent, which means enact God's law, put God's law into society, and teach everybody everything Christ has commanded, instead of that, they're going with, because we want to save babies' lives, we're going to call you to less than full repentance. We're going to call you to only protect some babies in a strategy to eventually try to get all babies saved. But it never actually gets there, and that's, that's why disobedience to God actually is futile. It doesn't get you anywhere. Even though people think that denying the Great Commission and not teaching legislators everything that Christ has commanded, even though they think that will save more babies, in the end, in the long run, it only prolongs the Holocaust because people keep regulating murder, bills regulating abortion continue to be passed, and abortion continues to murder children. People continue to murder children through abortion. Um, incrementalism is fundamentally against the Great Commission. Jesus told his disciples to make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that Christ has commanded, everything that he's commanded, he told them to teach people. Well, when he said that, the, the disciples understood um, that God's law it requires the death penalty for murderers, and that Jesus is wanting them to go teach God's law to everybody. That's God's commandments at the time when Jesus said that. These are Jewish people understanding that God's law is what needs to be taught to all nations. So in Genesis 9, 6, God says, If any man sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, because man is created in the image of God. So, therefore, we must put into law in our societies, in order to be just, uh, the death penalty for murderers. Uh, no matter what the age of the person who's murdered, the person who murdered that person, the persons who murdered that person um, must receive the death penalty after being convicted in court through, through the evidence and testimony of two or three witnesses. This is not being uh, carried out through the pro-life movement. The Many people in the pro-life movement um, are against the death penalty for, for women who murder their children, and uh, they are seeking to uh, put into law, they have sought to put into law bills that uh, protect only some children and leave others to die, which is iniquitous. It's not equal weights and measures. It's not showing, it's, uh, it is showing partiality, which the Bible says is transgression of God's law in the book of James. And uh, it, it's, they're actually iniquitous decrees. And Isaiah says, woe to those who write iniquitous decrees. Woe to those who write sinful laws. And so we can't write sinful laws. We can't write laws that tell people basically when, where, and how they can murder their children in an effort to try to save some lives. Um, the fact that you might save a life through that does not justify sinning against God. Nothing 
ever justifies sinning against God. We're always to love God more than anything else, and people in the pro-life movement end up idolizing baby saving by doing what they think will save more babies in a manner that's sinful, and they adopt a sinful strategy because they don't love God more than, than they love saving babies. They love saving babies more than they love obeying God. And in the end, they end up killing more babies because instead of abolishing abortion like we should have decades ago, regulating abortion has resulted in millions and millions and millions of children being murdered. So the pro-life movement has actually murdered millions of children because of its incrementalism, because of its rejection of the Great Commission. And um, the incrementalism also teaches the public that abortion is not really murder. So it's a, it's a massive education uh, campaign, basically, even though they might not, might not call it that. It, it educates tons of people to make them think, well, this isn't really murder we're dealing with here because you can regulate it. I mean, if it's really murder, then how could you pass a bill that allows some people to be murdered? It's just it, Abortion just becomes this bad thing that we have to regulate and cut down on, but it's not actually the murder of people, and it's not treated like the murder of any other human beings. So it, it, the cultural norms of what people think about abortion are influenced. They have been influenced by decades of incrementalism, decades of um, regulating sin, calling for the um, regulation of sin instead of the cutting off of sin. And um, this is not a denial that change happens incrementally over time because humans are sinful and we're not perfect. But the call is what this is all about. Incrementalism is about calling for increments, calling for regulation. Abolitionism, in contrast, is about calling for repentance. The Bible says God calls all men everywhere to repent in Acts 17. How does he do that? Through his church, the the people that God has sent out into the world to make disciples of all nations and to teach them everything that Christ has commanded. And incrementalism is not doing that. It's not calling all men everywhere to repent. It's actually teaching people that it's okay to sin. And that's why we should all we should all reject incrementalism and we should all reject it as an anti-gospel, anti-Great Commission ideology. It is thoroughly unbiblical and it is mass murdering millions of children.